Please remember that the complete information for the class that you are about to view is at elithecomputerguy.com. Not only do we have our videos there, but we have part lists, diagrams, pictures, and even complete code examples. So if you are watching this video and you want more information, please go to elithecomputerguy.com. Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and in today's class, I'm going to show you a little bit on how to use colors with CSS in order to make your HTML documents and your web applications just, just a little bit better, just a just we better, right? Uh, so if you're dealing with old IT professionals like, like me, uh, you may be used to seeing the color schemes that we create in our HTML documents and being slightly horrified. Again, we like our blacks, we like our reds, we like our yellows and our greens and and maybe if we're gonna go out on the edge a little bit maybe every once in a while we'll throw in a light gray one of the things is especially for old timers when they start uh, start coding web applications or HTML documents we know that colors exist and so we use those colors and the mess that can be that that can come out in the web application or the HTML document can be a little bit hard on the eyes. Again, uh, if you're using just the the basic bold colors that most people are used to uh, in the HTML world, you're using colors, but but they can be a bit harsh on the eyes. One of the nice things about CSS is if you use CSS for your colors, you have a whole range of options and colors that you can use for your web applications and HTML documents to make. The, the web application and document a lot easier on the eyes and be able to do things such as match the color scheme uh, for the organization that you're building the HTML document or web application for. Again, this is one of those valuable things as a consultant and as, as an employee where you can have something that technically works 100% correctly and it's so horrible to look at at the same time nobody wants to use it, right? Uh, one of the things that you can do with colors is if you can come up with a color scheme that matches what the organization already has, that's going to make everybody a lot happier, right? So if you, if you work for a company, that company already has a specific type of color scheme. When you create your application or your HTML document, if that document or application matches the color scheme that the organization already has, it's just going to make people a lot happier. And so by using CSS colors, uh, this is a way you can go in, you can tweak a lot of things with CSS to create an overall color scheme uh, that's gonna make the end users a lot happier. Uh, so today I'm going to be showing you a little bit more about how to use colors in CSS. So let's go over to the demonstration computer and I can show you how this works. So here we are back at my demonstration machine. Again, I am using a MacBook, so I use text edit in order to create these two documents, uh, but all you need is a basic ASCII text editor. So if you're in the Windows world, you can use Notepad, in the, the Mac world, you can use text edit, in the Linux world, you can use gedit, nano, vim, whatever you want. But basically, we just simply have two documents today. We have the style sheet as always. This is gonna be color style.css, and then we have the HTML document. This is what actually gets opened up in the web browser, and this is simply called color.html. Uh, so if we go here, here. Let's take a look at the style sheet first, and I will show you the three different ways uh, that you can associate a, a color uh, within CSS. So the first way, I've created a class simply called named, and basically what you can simply do is in just human readable text, you can print out a name. Uh, so you will notice that I do this most of the time for our projects, where I simply put blue or red or gray or black or light gray. Right. The nice part about simply being able to, to type out a human readable name is frankly that it is human readable. Again, if the if you don't have to be that worried about specific colors, simply having a human readable name is is makes life easier for somebody that has to go and actually read the code because they can go, okay, this color is blue and then they can move on. They know what this color is. So this is the first way uh, that you can name colors. Uh, but one of the issues here is that you don't get all of the possible uh, colors that are available within CSS. Uh, the next way that you can assign a color is by a hex code. So you will probably have seen this in a, a lot of HTML, again, CSS, is basically you can have a hex code for a color. Uh, this gives you a lot more options, uh, a crap metric, crap ton of options realistically. Uh, and so you simply say the color like you normally do, then you put the hash and then whatever the code is, and this, this is associated with a specific color and that is what will show up. Uh, you can also do RGB. So red, green, blue. So basically this is the, the different amounts of red, green, blue in order to create any specific color. 
So for this, you do color colon, uh, as you normally do, then you do RGB, then you do parentheses, and this is how much red, and this is how much green, and this is how much blue. Now the thing is, uh, for this, when you have a simple named color, you can probably pull this out of your butt. You can probably say, um, I want this to be yellow, you can type in yellow, and it'll probably be yellow. Uh, for the hex, or for the RGB, you will most likely be getting these from different sources, and I'll show you that in a second. Uh, just to show you how these colors show up, in an HTML document. Uh, if we go to the web browser, we can simply see this is how they show up. Uh, so this is the first one. This is the H1 with a named color. And again, this is a blue. And that's a blue, that's, that's a blue that you would know. You think if, if you type blue, if you type the color blue, that's probably what you're expecting to get. So you just get a nice, big, bold blue. This may be very useful for you um, because it is a blue color. But again, look at how kind of harsh that is. It's kind of harsh. It's a little bit hard on the eyes. That may not fit in with a color scheme. So what you might want is, again, some toned down colors, some prettier colors. Uh, so this is where we simply use that hex code. Uh, so that color, so this color is hash FFA94D. D. That's what this color is. And for the RGB, so this color, uh, RGB, this is 251-132-99. And what you can see here is that that just gives you kind of nice prettier colors. Uh, now, when you're trying to figure out what colors you should use, and again, uh, what you should put in either for a named color, for a hex, or for an RGB, there are a lot of tools out there that are available for you. Uh, one of the tools I tell everybody about, because it is a good tool, a good place to go, is w3schools.com. So w3schools.com is, again, it's a great reference, especially for basic web app development, um, and they have some different tools for you here. One of the first tools that they have is they actually give you all the HTML color names. So apparently there are 140 uh, color names and so you can actually just plug in these names. So aqua, azure, beige, uh, blue, violet, coral, cayenne, all of these different names here. If you don't want to put a hex or you don't want to put an RGB in, you could simply type out these names. So let's say for a color, let's say cayenne. So instead of being blue, which might be a little harsh, uh, let me call this uh, cayenne. I can do file, I can do save. Uh, then we go back to our web browser and when I do refresh, now I get the color cayenne. Again, the nice thing about this is that when I am looking at that CSS, I'm not trying to have to guess what that color might be. I can go cayenne. Okay, I have an idea of what cayenne might, might look like. CN, CN, cayenne, oh, horrible pr pronouncing things. Anyways, so that's basically what they have here and for the names. You'll also notice under here, they give you the hex. So for whatever reason, you don't wanna use the name, you wanna use the hex, this is actually the hex that you can plug in if you're using hex. The other thing that they have really, that's really cool here, again, for hex, is that they actually have a color picker, so an HTML color picker. So let's say you're trying to, you're trying to fit, find the perfect color. Again, let's say, let's say you're gonna be trying to, to to create a web application for me. And so you're trying to find the colors that will fit with my color scheme. So one of the cool things here is you can simply go over here. So this is a pick a color. And so it's like, okay, well, Eli is kind of orange. Uh, okay, so that's probably close. And so look at this. So once I click on this, over here, they give you a lighter and darker, and so they give you the hex code. And so this is this is one of the reasons that hex code can be very nice. Is I can I can start trying to figure out the overall color scheme I might be interested in. Ooh, that's nice. Okay, so I like that, but I want it to be I don't know at fifty five percent. So one of the things I can do is I can simply copy and paste this hex code. And so over here for this uh, this hex code color, I can simply paste. I do file. I do save. I go back to the web browser. I go back to my document, and now I can simply refresh and see now now we we get the color just a little bit change a little bit changed. And so again, that can be a nice thing if you're creating classes. Again, uh, when you're thinking about creating text that's all within the same style, the H1 might be a darker version of the color. The H2 might be a little bit lighter. Maybe you put a box. Maybe the box that you put things in, the background color is going to be this 95% here. So that's one of the cool things that you 
can do with these hex colors is you really can adjust and dial in uh, the colors that you want to be able to display on the screen. Now the final thing that I'll show you here is the RGB. So RGB again is uh, red, green, blue. Tells you how much red, how much green, how much blue. One of the ways that this can be valuable is imagine if you have a picture. Uh, so I brought this up here. And so this is a picture from when I was at Web Summit, uh, basically the same picture that I always use. So let's say I'm creating an HTML document and I want that document to be in the same color scheme as this particular picture. One of the things I can do is you see this little eyedropper up here. So we have this little eyedropper icon. So you can select that eyedropper icon and you can go through and you can look for the color that you want to match, right? So, uh, so we're going through here. And I don't know, let's say again, uh, let's say with the blue, I want to match the color of my, my titles to the blue. So what I can do is I can actually click on this and now this gives me the red, the green and the blue. So if I go back to my CSS, so I can go back to that style sheet. And so for this RGB here, so the RGB for this would be 60 R 127 green and two, oops, 247 blue. I can then do file, I can do save. We can go back to my web browser, again, go back to the HTML document, and then I hit refresh. And now that color, right, that color is going to look very similar to the blue in this particular picture. And so maybe that's what I want to do with the color scheme. Again, imagine, imagine I have an image. I want the color of my text or my border or my background or whatever else to be within the same color scheme of that image. All I have to do is again, I can go through, I can figure out what color I want to match with. If I want to match with like this orange, I could click on that. That gives me the RG blue or the RGB, and maybe the blue, maybe this, so on and so forth forth. And so that's an easy way that you can figure out what colors that you want to use uh, for your color scheme. Uh, so this is a basic idea of how to use colors within CSS. Again, you can, uh, you can either do named color. Oops, where is it? Oh, I lost it. <laughs> Oops, I did lose it. Where are you at? Uh, um, Oh, it's all the way down there. Sorry. Uh, so again, you can do a named color. Uh, so basically with this, again, you can do red, green, blue. You can do 140 of those named colors. That makes life easier because people have an idea of the color that you're going to be uh, presenting. You can do the hex. Again, this can be used good for like those color wheel types things, actually spinning out the hex. Or if you're using some kind of design software, again, some kind of paint software, you can use an eyedropper that may give you an RGB color and you can use the RGB color here. So this is a basic idea of how you can use colors in CSS and why it's important. And that's also an example of why you need to keep track of all of your windows on your desktop when you're trying to do a screen share. Again, it's a little bit more complicated doing these classes than you, than you may think. Just trying to keep track of all of these pictures on one little window and be able to flip between them all. That's, uh, that's a bit, bit more of a pain in the butt than you may realize. Uh, so a big thing to be thinking about though, again, if you're a standard IT professional, you know, you're, you may be one of those people that think colors don't matter. Just give them blue, just give them red. I gave these people a color, they should be happy. But again, when you're dealing with end users, especially when you're dealing with bosses, taking an extra hour to come up with a color scheme for your application that actually is easy on the eyes is one of those things that will get you called back, right? You can be 100% right and have a product that's 100% horrible to use all at the same time. So if you just drop a web application on your client's desk or onto their computer, and again, it's red and it's yellow and it's green and it's blue, again, it may, it may technically be correct. You may have put hundreds of hours of work into the back end to make that application work, but when the user goes to use it, it looks ugly as hell, and frankly, they're not gonna be impressed. They're, they don't see your PHP. They don't see your Python. They don't see the database. What they see is whatever interface you've given them to use. And if it is ugly as hell, they're not going to be impressed. So simply, like literally, simply spending one to two hours 
out of a project that may have taken you hundreds of hours to complete simply to come up with a basic color scheme so all the text everything basically more or less looks like it should go together and especially if you do it so that it matches whatever the organization's color scheme is that's the type of thing that will get you called back again as a real professional if you're if you're going to be an entrepreneur as a real contractor as an entrepreneur it's the tiny little things it's that extra one to two hours just to make everything look a little bit nicer that's what's going to get you called back the difference between the people that do get called back and don't get called back sadly enough it's not the back end python it's not the back end php it's not it's not the infrastructure that gets built the end users your boss has no idea what that looks like has no idea what it should look like so the fact of the matter is the person who creates a really crappy back end but makes the front end pretty versus somebody that makes a really good back end but makes a front end ugly the front end that's pretty they're the ones that are going to get called back that's how the real world actually operates so really think about going in again just tweaking the color scheme just a little bit you know instead of red maybe go in and find something a little bit more subtle or magenta or something like that right doing those little bit of improvements those little bit of tweaks really will just mean the world of when you're creating your web application so as always i enjoyed doing this class and look forward to seeing you at the next one if you like the content that I create, please think about going to elinethecomputerguy.com and becoming a member or donating. Please understand that all the educational videos are in front of the paywall. That includes the videos, that includes the notes, the diagrams, and the code example. All of that is freely available and in front of the paywall. But if you want to watch opinion videos or if you want to be able to comment, you do need to become a member. Membership is $5 a month or $60 a year and gives you access to those opinion videos and the ability uh, to comment if you don't want to become a member you just want to give a one-time uh, donation there is also a donate button where you can do that please understand in order to provide the education that i am it does cost money servers cost money equipment costs money travel costs money all of these things cost a reasonable amount of money and the fact of the matter is is youtube's advertising program no longer supports creators the way that it used to so if you want to these classes to continue to stick around and you find them to be valuable please think about either becoming a monthly member or donating a few dollars for this project